Well, we're moving on up to the east side to enjoy watching the Jeffersons get a piece of the pie. This classic Norman Lear sitcom lasted 11 seasons, and each week started with this upbeat serenade by another sitcom favorite. Hey, we're moving on. as the iconic theme song was composed and sung by Janet Dubois, who played the vivacious neighbor on Good Times. And I know when we all visit the Big Apple, we sing this song at least once to ourselves. It's awesome! Similar to its parent sitcom All in the Family, the Jeffersons explored controversial issues such as alcoholism, racism, suicide, being transgender, and much more certainly cementing itself as one of the most important sitcoms of all time. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, for Do You Remember? And today, we're heading back to Manhattan to revisit our favorite family, the Jeffersons. If you enjoy this cast rewind, be sure to give it a thumbs up for us, and subscribe to the channel for even more content. Isabel Sanford Louise Jefferson, aka Wheezy, is much like Edith Bunker from All in the Family, in that they're both kind-hearted and sensible women, with incredibly hot-headed husbands. Wheezy would always have a smart remark to spit at George when he's going off on something. Would you like me to call an ambulance? <laughs> this couple showcased that even different personalities can work together and build a lasting relationship. It was beautiful, actually. And Isabel Sanford was the only one for the role, actually born in Harlem herself. Her first film role was in the 1967 Sidney Poitier-led film, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, in which her performance garnered solid reviews and the interest of one of the most important men in Hollywood, Norman Lear. And when Lear saw the potential for their spinoff, Sanford was initially reluctant to commit. Her schedule was already packed, and she was happy on All in the Family. But betting on herself was well worth it, and she amassed seven Emmy nominations, winning one and making history as the first African-American actress to win in the lead actress category. Following the Jeffersons, she got her own TV show titled Isabel's Honeymoon Hotel, which aired five days a week in syndication, but it failed to attract viewers. She would once again join Sherman in two episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in 1995. The two were always seen together, also appearing in a series of ads for Denny's and Old Navy. Isabel passed away in 2004, in the months that followed a surgery on a corroded artery, one month shy of her 87th birthday. Sherman Hemsley Enter the no-nonsense and outspoken star. George Jefferson, getting his start and gaining a following with his face-offs with Archie Bunker. Watching this fella do anything was a riot. She was right the first time, Mr. Jefferson. <laughs> George's actor, Sherman Hemsley, was no stranger to hard work. He dropped out of high school and joined the Air Force. He then worked for the post office during the day while acting in plays at night. This led to Broadway, where Norman Lear took note and cast him as George Jefferson. You may also remember him from the show Amen as Deacon Ernest Fire, which enjoyed five successful seasons. Then came some legendary voice work in the show Dinosaurs, where he fantastically voiced the boss of the main character, Earl. In 1989, Hemsley, who had been a jazz keyboardist, released a single, Ain't That a Kick in the Head. He continued acting throughout his life, oftentimes appearing as George Jefferson. Aside from acting, he was a very private and reclusive man who never married or had kids. Hemsley was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame in 2012, the same year he sadly passed at 74 in his home in El Paso, Texas. Marla Gibbs who doesn't love Florence, the maid of the house, who is sassy, wisecracking, and can make anyone laugh with her attitude. She'll put George in his place too. It's just the right side. Thank you, Florence. For wrapping the garbage in. <laughs> Which audiences and critics loved, as Marla Gibbs received five Emmy nominations. Marla began acting in the early 70s, picking up an episode of Barney Miller in 1975. And if you miss Fish and Company, we have an entire video dedicated to that show too. The spin-off parade continued as she took Florence to a new series in the 1981 Checking In, but this posh hotel show had people checking out instead. Luckily, after the Jeffersons ended, she jumped right into another starring role in the series 227. She would later join former 227 co-star Jackie Harry in The First Family as Harry's on-screen mother. 
Today, she's almost 90 years old and just reprised her Florence in 2019's Live in Front of a Studio audience. Marla is incredibly still very active. Just last year, she was in the Tracy Morgan TV show, The Last OG. And it may be that Marla Gibbs is in fact the last OG. Mike and Damon Evans. Lionel Jefferson was the militant son, who ultimately becomes close with Archie Bunker's son-in-law, Meathead. Lionel was completely unfazed by Archie, and actually finds him amusing, being pretty wisecracking himself. Mike Evans first played the role of Lionel. Lucky for Mike that Norman Lear didn't get his first choice. Blazing Saddle Zone, Cleavon Little. Mike left the show after the first season because reportedly he wanted more screen time. But it was no worry for anyone as Damon stepped in admirably and Mike was a busy man, being one of the creators and writers to the other ultra successful Norman Lear vessel, Good Times. Sadly, he died of cancer in 2006 at just 57 years old. Damon Evans, the second Lionel, had no relation to Mike and is an accomplished singer and stage performer. However, his life was plagued by depression and drug use, revealing in 2019 that he turned to drugs to deal with the frustration of being on the Jeffersons. You see, he wanted to pursue opera singing. Thankfully, he did turn his life around, quit drugs, and actually go back to school to earn his bachelor's degree in psychology from Bronx College. Today, Damon's 71 years old and hasn't acted since 2000 in an episode of Third Watch. Roxy Roker Helen Willis is Louise's best friend, but might as well be George's arch nemesis with how they go back and forth at each other. Well, I guess that leaves you and me. Yeah, it's been a bad night all around, eh? <laughs> especially about Helen's interracial marriage. When casting the role, producers asked if she'd feel comfortable with her character having a white husband. She responded by whipping out a photo of her and her husband, who, like Tom Willis, was also a white Jewish man. Mr. Kravitz and Roxy Roker's son is musician and actor Lenny Kravitz, who would often visit the set with his mother. Roxy's star power continues today, as her granddaughter is yet another Hollywood favorite, Big Little Lies actress Zoe Kravitz. After the Jeffersons, she had a lot of minor roles, her last television gig being an episode of Hanging with Mr. Cooper in 1993. Roxy was also lifelong friends with Marla Gibbs, but sadly, Roxy died in 1995 at the age of 66 from breast cancer. Lenny Kravitz wrote his song, Thinking of You, after her passing, and the video features Lenny singing with a young photo of Roxy featured in the background, a beautiful tribute to mom. Franklin Cover. Tom Willis is Helen's husband, and often the butt of most of George's jokes. But the two were also friends, and a friendly ribbing is just part of their chemistry. Don't call me hunk! Franklin Cover first began acting in 1960, and was on the Jackie Gleason show a couple of times in 67 as a police officer. But his big break was this Tom Willis, a great foil to George. He'd frequent some more shows in the 80s and 90s, like two episodes of Who's the Boss in 1991 as Mr. Kimball. His final acting role was a great one, part of the Chris Farley comedy Almost Heroes in 1998. Franklin died in 2006 at the age of 77 from complications of pneumonia. Berlinda Tolbert Jenny is the only daughter of Helen and Tom Willis, who became engaged to Lionel Jefferson, eventually marrying and having a daughter, further entrenching the two families. Lynn Moody played Jenny Willis in the All in the Family episode Lionel's Engagement, but Verlinda took over for the full series. Tolbert had some film success too, being part of Eddie Murphy's Harlem Nights in 1989. Today, she's 71 years old and hasn't acted since 2013, with her last notable role being a 2005 episode of the the HBO show Six Feet Under. Paul Benedict. Harry Bentley is the Jefferson's next door neighbor and was a pretty outlandish UN interpreter. He is mostly kind hearted, but George finds him an annoying playboy Englishman. But as with George, just because they argue doesn't mean they can't get over their differences and become friends. Paul Benedict's oversized jaw and large nose were partially attributed to acromegaly, the same condition that the Adams family Ted Cassidy suffered from. For more on Ted and company, check out our deep dive into that quirky family next.
Norman Lear cast Benedict as a Zen Buddhist in the satiric film Cold Turkey. Paul is possibly most recognized for his work on Sesame Street as the Mad Painter. Paul's final role was in 2008, and he was found dead that same year of natural causes at the age of 70. What a timeless classic. Norman Lear was a television goliath, and this one is up there with his best. The Jeffersons entertained us for years, while also teaching us valuable lessons about acceptance. So tell us, what was your favorite episode of this classic show? Did you prefer another Norman Lear TV show? Let us know in the comments below. We read them all. And if you enjoyed this week's episode, please give it a big thumbs up for us. I know George would. Well, he might. Okay, he wouldn't, but he would most certainly subscribe to the channel, cause he's no dummy and would never want to miss a video. As always, from all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.